CDs, compact discs are still king, so says the recording industry, but those LPs, the old record albums, they aren't exactly dead yet. So what is the attraction for vinyl again? Well, that's the subject of our Night Beat Extra tonight. New Center for Linda Yee reports music lovers from Generation X to baby boomers and older never really gave up on the LPs. Oh, great. A familiar routine for music lovers who refuse to bow to compact disc pressure. It's a slower way to get to the music, but for 42-year-old Dale Hooks, much more satisfying. His album collection numbered 500 at one time, a pristine jazz and soul collection he began 30 years ago and still listens to. Each record album holds a special place in his heart. Yeah, I've got to admit, I do have some CDs, and, uh, but just the albums. Uh, I can pick up, uh, like, for instance, one of these, Bobby Humphrey. I remember back in the 70s, she's one of the hottest uh, flutists going. And I remember when I, that was my, one of my first concerts I went to see was Bobby Humphrey. So it has a bit of nostalgia to every album that I have. The recording industry says that CDs still dominate the market, but you still will find people looking for record albums. And these are not just collectors. Here at Saturn Records in Oakland, the emphasis is on LPs, used ones in mint condition. Collectors and lovers of long-playing albums shop here. It's about $6 an album compared to the $16 to $20 price per CD. Owner Scott Wax is considering phasing out the CDs. Yeah, uh, I, I just think the CD thing has largely been a, a sham in the industry, just trying to make it, people uh, rebuy their old music, paying more for something that's actually cheaper to make. LPs became popular again when bands like Pearl Jam insisted on vinyl along with CD releases. We can put a little low bottom in George this, Horn of Fantasy uh, Studios cuts vinyl masters. His primary customers today, nightclub DJs and alternative rock bands who want to offer vinyls to fans. He never had to get rid of this old lathe in the studio. Well, vinyl records uh, sort of coexisted with CDs from about 85 to 89 or 90. And, and about 1990, they sort of fell off a cliff. Horn says when CDs appeared, vinyls made up just 10% of the billion-dollar recording industry. Now it's climbing back up to 20%. This independent record label in San Francisco started five years ago, mainly producing LPs for alternative artists. 30-somethings Michael and Jody McFadden say their company, Ubiquity, at first was favored by a subculture of fans, but is a big mainstream success today. I think it's always been popular. I think majors, it was easier for them to just make the CDs and ignore the record buyers, but they're out for the independent labels. They're out there and they want it, so you're seeing the majors come back and do small presses of vinyl. Dale Hooks is not interested in the new sounds on his LPs. He favors the old hisses and distortions that come with his collection, but it brings back beautiful memories. Linda Yee, New Center 4, on the Night Beat. Yeah, they do bring back some memories. There is the argument, though, that CDs have better sound quality than LPs, but in the words of one sound engineer, well, that's like talking about what tastes better. It's all a matter of personal opinion.